and it's just something that uh, it kind of gets in your blood and, and you want to go out and it's the thrill of the hunt. I got into collecting, it was in 1970, and it was kind of funny how I really started collecting. My wife's grandmother passed away. And in the cupboards, when we were cleaning them out, we found five etched beer glasses. I just liked those, and I started collecting them. And then I started, I started to go to some shows. There's, uh, there's shows that are strictly for Bruriana collectors. Bruriana is the collecting of, collecting of brewery items. Back uh, in the 1980s, I got this call from this lady and she said she was digging petunias out in the yard and she dug up this sign and she says she was a german lady and she says yeah but you probably don't want it because it's bent and it's full of dirt she said and i couldn't figure out she says it's got a bird on it so i couldn't figure out what she was talking about so i headed up to her house which was about 15 miles away and I got there and it was all caked up with dirt and I seen it was a corner sign and I was excited and I bought it immediately and I, I got home and I cleaned it up and as you can see it's in pretty decent shape. These are the pre-pro mugs here that I have in my collection. Uh, there's a West Bend Brewing Company mug in there uh, and other mugs but uh, these are all pre-prohibition type mugs and, and date anywhere from 1880 to about 1920. Uh, the Blatz mug down in the bottom is the only known example. That is probably from the 1880s. It has a lady on it's the Val Blatz Brewing Company. I'm the collector. I mean, my wife goes along with me to the shows and helps me do the shows because I need help. But uh, she's not really a collector. But she she lives with what I collect. <laughs> Let's put it that way. When I was 18, I started working for the, for Pabst. One of my first jobs, well, actually maybe a second job, third shift, middle of the night, was sorting bottles. And the reason you do that is... All the returnable bottles are going back to the plant for refilling while there's mixed up with green bottles, white bottles, you know, non-returnable bottles, all sorts of junk would come in. And if too much junk comes in each case, they would, you know, had, somebody had to sit there and sort it all out. So we used to have crews working, there'd be three, four, five guys a night doing nothing than pulling bottles out of cases and putting them in the right cases. Well, sheer boredom aside, you start seeing labels you've never seen before, bottles you've never seen, you start setting them aside and collecting them. My first passion is labeled bottles. Then just about every bottle here has a story. If you want to make some money off women, children, elderly, infirm people, sick people. So what do you do? You make tonics. These are medicinal beers. Although they're high in alcohol, they're a little bit heavier concentration of, of solids. And the real story behind them is they're healthful for you, is what they're trying to tell you. But they all did it. All the breweries are making what they call malt tonics. They're basically beers that you could buy at a drugstore. Probably have, if you're talking strictly beers, probably 600, maybe 700. Another on soft drinks, maybe another 1,000. We didn't even look at soft drink bottles. Those are over there, too. Um, the reason I did soft drinks is because these are brewery soft drinks. These are all bottles that breweries use. This is Gutch and Sheboygan root beer, but it's actually put in an old vice beer bottle that they would have used around 1910. And it's a little hard to see, but you know, eventually the breweries, some of the breweries are making soft drinks during Prohibition in order to you know make a buck. This is Bob, my husband Bob Markowitz. Uh, the passion of it all is what I could see in him that gave me the joy and the pleasure of seeing him collecting all of this stuff. Um, and he was always young at heart with it, the excitement, like the little boy in candy store. <laughs> it was Bob and his antique world and his advertising, but it was his passion. He had a desire for it, a strong desire. And um, 
people saw that in him. A lot of friends admired that in him. That was his pride and joy, his uh, folk signs. And uh, he was happy. He got him out of Chicago. He tried to get um, people younger than ourselves, even 20, 30 years ago, interested in collecting uh, bottles. It's good to start out with small things, something that, you know, a teenager or a kid can afford, even if it's baseball cards or whatever. And um, it was always usually bottles, um, glasses, beer glasses. And he was ready, willing, and able to talk about the history on any brewery and to pass along as much information as possible.